That's what it is, you know. The tawny pipit. It does look awfully like the picture. Are you sure it's the only one without spots? Let's have a look. It can't be. It says it only knitted here once before. I'm absolutely certain. Let's go and ring up Uncle Arthur. We've justified his choice in books anyway. Yes, haven't we? Lipsby Lee must be just over the top there. Let's go and see if they're on the phone. Uh -huh. You know, I don't believe you know how to use this thing. I'm sure we're coming the wrong way. All right, now, sir. What about this? Oh! You try and get down this way. I think so, too. No, no spots at all, just a plain pipit. And it's in a clump of grass right out in the middle. Well, well of course we can't be sure. That's why we want you to come down. Hmm? What, what's the name of this place, Jimmy? Let's believe. Hey, let me talk to him. Hello? This is Bancroft, Mr. Hooper. It's called Lipsbury Lee. Now, two words. L-I-P-S-B-U-R-Y-L-E-A. Yes, yes, that's right. Goodbye, sir. It's coming down tomorrow. He says it's probably only a meadow pipit with very faint markings. And even if it is the tawny pipit, it's a thousand to one, it's not breeding. Well, that's very scientific and encouraging. Well, we've got to keep an eye on it until he gets down here. Mm. Can they put us up? Oh, no. But the landlord said there's a Miss Pyman down the road. What say he sent us? Oh, uh -huh. Could you tell us where Mill Cottage is? The little house stands by itself. You, you can, please. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, yeah, we've got some distinguished visitors, then. I got eyes, haven't I? Not them. I mean down in the pinfold. Two rare birds. Only been in England once before, called Tawny Pippins. Oh? Who told you? Ah, wouldn't you like to know? In a clump of grass right out in the middle. Got hardly any spots on them. I know where they're going to stay, too. At Miss Pyman's. <laughs> I could have told you that. I suppose the whole village will know now you know. Well, I shan't tell anybody. You can please yourself what you do. Tommy. Morning, Colonel. Heard the news? Just caught the eight o'clock summary, but there's nothing new. Same as nine o'clock last night, only Phillips instead of Hibbard reading it. I mean in Lipsbury Lee, sir. Proper goings on here. Oh? Down in the pinfold, a pair of distinguished visitors arrived. Really? Yes, sir. A pair of rare birds. Tawny Pippins. Only been to England once before. Got hardly any spots on them. A pair of what? Tawny Pippins, sir. 
Young couple come down from London specially to look at them. Oh. Tony what? Tony Pippin, sir. Never heard of him. Hello there. Good morning. You sleep well? Fine. How about you? Like a log. She couldn't wake me. Good. I'm nearly finished. I got the worst off. Where is she? In the garden. Go through and say good morning. I'm nearly ready. Don't be long. I'll be down in a minute. Good morning, Miss Pyman. Oh, good morning, Miss. Here, let me give you a hand. Oh, that's all right, Miss. They're nearly finished. Your friend, Mr. Bancroft, nearly drove me mad last night. Trying to remember where I'd seen him before. Have you seen him before? Well, not exactly him, but his photograph. It came to me suddenly in the middle of the night. He was in the paper for getting the DFC, wasn't he? How clever of you to remember. Why I remember is he's not unlike a vicar we used to have. When I saw his picture in the paper, I said to myself, what a funny thing, and I cut it out. Look. He's a DSO as well now. Really? He hasn't got it yet, of course, because he's only just come out of hospital. He got mixed up with some German fighters and came home with a pair of broken legs and a shoulder blade in about ten pieces. Good gracious. I've been his nurse now for about five months. Well, I'll take good care of him, miss. You can depend on me. I only wish I could have managed the two of you. Everything ready? Gosh, you were quick. You mustn't miss the lady sniper next week. Fancy, she shot more than a hundred Germans. Isn't that wonderful? I didn't used to hold with these foreign wars, but I don't see how we could help this one, do you? <laughs> I think you've got something there. One o'clock, Miss Pyman. Yes, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. There he goes, right into that camp. Have a look. Seems on top of the world this morning. I expect she just told him he's going to be a father. Hello. You've got visitors. Visitors? Where? Through the gap over there. I wonder what they're doing here. Stop them, Jimmy! He said he was in a big clump, right out in the middle. There it is! Hey, there's a frog! <laughs> oh, no, put it in old Curtis's desk. Give it some grass, it might get hungry. Frogs don't eat grass, I eat flies. Good morning. Wait a minute. Let me go! Let me go! Now, what were you two doing creeping along here? You were up to something, weren't you? Weren't you? You were going to rob a nest, weren't you? Who told you? Oh, Tommy. Well, who told him? Rose Sherman. Who's she? At the Grey Goose. Oh. You see, we're going to have to have a talk about this. You've left your coat. What's your name? Alec. Alec what? Alec Henry William Charles Ferguson. And yours? Only Gregory. How old? Ten? Eleven? I suppose you know you could get into trouble robbing birds' nests. What would your father say? My dad's in the army. So is mine. We're evacuees. We live with Tommy Fairchild. Hmm. What are we going to do with them? I don't know. What are we going to do with you, eh? I don't know. Don't know. Do you know how to use these? Yes, sir. You want them in and out. Well, come over here. I want to show you something. Now, you see that clump of grass over there? Yes, sir. I want you to have a good look at it through those. Got it? Don't it make it look me? Here, let's have a go. Can you see that bird? Cool, oh, yes, sir. Come and sit down here a minute. We think that bird's a tawny pipit. And if it's nesting, it's only the second time it's happened in England. Pretty wonderful when a thing like that happens, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, if it is a tawny pipit, and if it is nesting, we're going to stay here in Lipsbury Lee and watch over it until the eggs hatch out. We want you to help us. Can we use these? Oh, yes, of course. You'd be in charge of them. Oh. But you must keep it a dead secret. Because if it gets about, you know, someone's sure to pinch the eggs or frighten the birds away. It's already got about. Well, Sherman told everybody we only wanted to be first. You know, I think we're going to need some reinforcements. What's the name of your vicar? Mr. Kingsley, he sings in his choir. 
He's a man we want to see. We know where he lives. Come on, then. Show me the way. I think I'll stay here, just in case. Right. Anthra, anthracites, anthrax. Ah, here we are, anthus. A small bird, probably the yellow wagtail, from the Greek anthos, meaning blossom or brilliancy. But it's not a wagtail at all. It's a pipit. I always believe in going right to the fountainhead, Miss Broom. Cam, cam, cam. Here we are. Campestris, of or pertaining to the level field or plain. The opposite of Montanus, Calinus. A small bird, probably the little yellow wagtail of the plains. Splendid. Well, now, Miss Broom, what do you suggest? I really don't know. But we can't be on guard day and night. I'll tell you what. We'll ask Mr. Curtis to lend us half a dozen good runners and we'll send them out into the highways and byways and call in the whole village to a special meeting. How's that? That sounds wonderful. As soon as your uncle has given his verdict, that is, and always assuming it's in the positive, which, of course, we all hope. <laughs> Well done, my boy. You were quite right. Mr. MacDougall, this field will go down in history. Let's go and have a look. And not too much noise. There she goes. This is a great moment. Only the second time in Britain. Is that the full clutch? No, she usually lays five. There's probably one more to come. Now, who can we get to fix up a hide? You mean a portable observation post? Yes, that's the idea. Leave it to me. The vicar of Lipsbury Lee will arrange it all. I think we have the very man for you, Mr. Hooper. Tommy Fairchild? Yes. I'm sure the Colonel won't mind. Ah, there's a beauty. Look at it. Sure you won't have one yourself, Colonel? No, thank you. I'm sticking to carrot. So I took the liberty of telling him to go and get on with it right away. Quite right. And we'd like you to be in the chair, Colonel. Oh, you don't want an old warrior like me, Kingsley. Why not one of you young bloods? Oh, no, we need your guiding hand. I thought around half past eight, if that suits you. Suits me, all right. And in the square? Yes, yeah, better than on the green. Not so far for me to go. <laughs> Splendid. See you later, then, Colonel. What do you say it's called, Kingsley? Anthus Campestris, the tawny pipit. Never heard of it. <laughs> I prefer this way. Not so much trouble. So long as we fox them, that's what matters. There she goes. What a little beauty. I think you ought to come along to the meeting, Uncle. Looks bad if we haven't one expert present. I did intend to go back to town tonight. We have a meeting of the ABO. What's the ABO? The Association of British Ornithologists. All the big noises in the bird world. And I was hoping to deliver the good tidings in person. Well, surely you should stay here and give us moral support. Of course, I could send them a wire. I'd like to be there to see their faces, though. If you write it out now, I've got to go down to the village to see Mr. Kingsley. I'll send it off for you. Yes, before I change my mind. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. Now, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think these are all pretty reliable. Uh, let's make it a round number. Now then, one more. <laughs> The next best would be Alfred Finch. Finch? Hmm. He's been rather badly behaved lately, you know. We've been trying much harder this last day or two. Well, uh, just this once, then. Stand out the ten that are chosen. There they are, Mr. Kingsley. East and west and south and north, the messengers ride fast. And tower and town and hamlet have heard the trumpet's blast. Now, how many have got bicycles? Then you can cover the more scattered habitations and the infantry can deal with the village. <laughs> All right, cut along. No, 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 no. Only the ten. Ah. Thank <laughs> you. 
been an attempt to rifle the nest, no names, no pack drill. But it's up to us to decide whether these little visitors are to be allowed to hatch out their family in peace and quiet, or not. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's Mrs. Franklin. Uh, just help Mrs. Franklin through there, will you, Watson? Now then, this love of animals and of nature has always been part and parcel of the British way of life, and it's going to go on being. <laughs> Now, we welcome to our country thousands of foreigners at one time or another, uh, French, Dutch, Poles, Czechs, and so on, and a lot of them are jolly decent people, and anyway, they can't help being foreigners. Well, that's what these little pippets are. You see, and we are jolly well going to see to it that they get fair play, or we shall want to know the reason why. Aurora! <laughs> now, we've heard a great deal about the differences between Nazism and democracy. But in my opinion, the big difference between ourselves and the Hun is that the Hun doesn't know the meaning of play the game. He never did and he never will. What we mean to give these little pippets is fair play on a square deal and no hitting below the belt. <laughs> now, it's for you to decide, and I might just as well say here and now that we are determined we are going to decide on the right side. Did my wire go off all right? Oh, I forgot all about it. I must phone them at once. I must let them know. Well, there's a phone in the Grey Goose at the bottom of the stairs. I'm sure we're all very grateful to Colonel Barton Barrington for putting the issue so clearly. I'm just going to phone. Just inside one of the I stairs. I can't add anything to what he said, except to remind you that when Noah wanted to find out if the waters were subsiding, he chose a bird as his messenger. In that particular case, a dove. And lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. <laughs> well, that doesn't exactly prove anything, but I do think it's important. You spelt it wrong. There's only one P in Pippet. Go on, there's two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Will you be quiet up there? How long does it take these eggs to hatch out, sir? Just about a fortnight. Now, any more questions? No? Then I'll ask the Colonel to say a few closing words. Well, well now, I, I think we're pretty well all agreed that we're going to come down like a ton of bricks on anyone who tries to rob this nest or drive these little visitors away. Are we all agreed on that? <laughs> Good. Splendid. Excellent. Well, I, I think that covers pretty well everything, and thank you all very, very much for coming along. That's all. Thank you. Oh, just a moment, everybody. These eggs are very, very valuable, and I dare say there are plenty of people who'd like to get their hands on them. So don't go giving the game away to strangers, you see? All right. No, no, no. Lipsbury Lee. The signature, Hooper. You better read it back to me, Foster, to make sure you've got it right. Arthur Kemp... Oh. Anthus Kempistris is breeding in Lipsbury Lee. Hooper. Oh, there's more than I dare do to break in on them now, sir. They're right in the thick of it. They'll be out in half an hour, sir. Won't it do then? All right, I'll do my best, but I can't promise. Goodbye, sir. Cool, what a lark. Within the distributional range of this subspecies, there is considerable variation in the nature of the song. As I have tried to show, there are considerable differences from one part of Great Britain to another in the size of the territory that the chaffinch takes up, in the time of the year at which he establishes himself at his headquarters, and in the energy and degree of jealousy with which he guards his territorial rights. If I may now turn to another example, possibly even more illuminating, I can demonstrate that a similar state of affairs exists among the wrens. My audience is no doubt well aware of the fact that the British wrens have been divided by reputable systematists, with whom few of us could quarrel, into three subspecies, or as some of us might like to call them, populations whose essential characteristics differ from one another to an extent which is statistically significant. <laughs> the three subspecies with which we have to deal are the mainland wren, 
Trump the Dikes, Trump the Dikes, Trump the Dikes, the Shetland Wren, Trump the Dikes, Trump the Dikes, said that. Sir, pardon me, Professor, something right out of the blue. Gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. I have here a message from our esteemed colleague Hooper. Gentlemen, and the Scampestris is breeding in Lipsbury Lee. <laughs> It's only 20 past four by some time. You'll be spit mad. Well, depends how keen you are. Well, if there was a train, I'd be down there tonight. I'm keen enough, but I draw the line at a milk train at my age. Good old lady. from the station. <laughs> What's it matter? There's bound to be a bus if there isn't. We can walk. I admire your enthusiasm, Wimble. Well, there's no good arguing the point. That's the time, 6.20. Whose game? I have. No. That's good. We meet at the barrier at quarter past. Okay. I'll I'll be be there. There. Good night, all. Good, good night. Good night. Good night. So long, Kreska. So long. Uh, coming along, Kreska. Uh, I've got to make a phone call. Uh, I'll catch you up. It's you, that is. Mrs. Pickering speaking. Who? Oh, it's you. Kraska, do you want to speak to him? Well, might as well. Hello, man. Quite a stranger, aren't you? Which one? <whistles> Did you hear that, Elsie? I know very well I didn't. Anthus Campestris breeding lips very lee. One of the wagtails. No, no, the tawny pipit. What are they worth? Forty pounds at least. Well, what's he going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? We're going down there tomorrow. I'll send you the usual telegram as soon as I see the setup. Uh, we're catching the first train in the morning. Goodbye, big man. Charlington! Here we are. Charlington. Only five miles from Liftbury Lee. Getting hot at last. Oh, to goodness, there's a bus. Mm, we'll soon find out. Well, oh, they'll know. It's addressed to Forrester. I'll find it, miss. Excuse me. Uh, oh, uh, can we get to Lipsby Lee? I mean a bus or anything. No bus from here, sir. You're going in, Nancy. Can't you take them? Well, I can give them a lift as far as Lucky Lane. Then you can get the Pawsworth bus from there. Here you are, miss, right at the back. Oh, God, thank oh, you. Awfully charming of you, I'm sure, eh? Don't mind a bit of a squeeze, that's no, 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 The lean these days. All aboard? <laughs> yes, we are. Come on, darling. Out of it like this, isn't it? Yes. Wonderful. In my young days, we used to call them the gentle sex. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like farm work, miss? The name's Nancy. Uh, Nancy? Well, I do and I don't. It's long hours and hard work in all weathers, and the farmer's wife's a beast. But we get well fed, we sleep like logs, and we've never felt fitter in our lives. Really? Besides, we really feel we're helping to beat those bees. Those what? must have found it a big change coming out into the wilds like this. I'll say we did. Now, look at Maisie. She was a hairdresser till a year ago. You know, wave, set, squirt a brilliant team, five bar. Well. Still, it comes in very useful. She gives us a tidy up every Saturday night. Well, you look wonderful. So fresh. Oh, you should have seen me a couple of years ago at the Coconut Grove. I only wish I had. Staying with the Russian sniper. When is that? Next Friday. She shot over 100 Germans. Oh, I'm afraid we shall have gone by then. Pity. Yes, it is. I want to see what she's got that I haven't. Oh, here we are. Lucky Lane. I can't tell you how grateful we are. Oh, that's all right. It's darling that does the work anyway. I do hope you won't feel insulted. 
insulted. I should say not. It's the nicest thing that's happened to me since Christmas. Well, I hope you have a nice dance. We all envy the young men in your village, you know. <laughs> oh, that's even nicer than the half crown. Oh, look out, there's your bus. Oh, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do you stop at Lipsbury Lee? Stop whatever you want to get out. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Get inside, man. Come on, darling. I don't know what all the fuss is about. Just an ordinary titlock. I've seen thousands of them. You've never seen this one. It's a special kind of titlock. Only been to England once before. Uh, excuse me, could you tell us where we can find the tawny pipits? Beg your pardon, sir? We understand there are a pair of very rare birds nesting somewhere here. Could you direct us to them? Rare birds? Did you hear anything about a pair of rare birds, old Willie? I don't get about much these days. I hardly know what is going on. You hear anything about a pair of rare birds, Harry? Rare what? No, I haven't heard. This is Lipsbilly, isn't it? Always has been. Never since I know it. Sure you've got the right village, sir? Sure you haven't made a mistake? No, no, it's certainly somewhere here. There's old Mrs. Williams. She might know. Oh, good. I'll ask her. Good day. Good, good day. day. Good day. I suppose they wouldn't be interested in a pair of tawny titlocks. Oh, I don't like the looks of this. I should go and fetch old Tommy. Ah, I will. Can you suggest anyone who would know? I don't know who to suggest. Mrs. Wilkinson at the shop might help you. Just over the bridge. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Oh. Don't look as if Mrs. Williams knowed either. No, I thought perhaps she wouldn't. Let me see. The last of your points, Mrs. Draper. Thank you. I did hear something about it, but I can't quite call it to mind. My memory is getting that bad. That'll be five and eightpence, Mrs. Draper. If I were you, I'd ask the vicar. He's sure to know. Thank you very much. Good day. Is that them? Hey, that's them. All right, you make yourself scarce. I'll look after them. Oi! Are you the gentleman what's looking for the rare birds? Yes, can you help us? We didn't expect you till dinner time. We came by the very early train. Oh, and you stop there. I'll be coming round. Right, fine. Hooper must have told them. Where is Hooper? Why couldn't he have met us? Don't be silly. How should he know we were coming at the crack of dawn? Sorry you gentlemen have been kept waiting, but you're in good hands now. Follow me. Oh. This way, gentlemen, please. Hello. Here you are, gentlemen. Thank you. Much obliged. Oh, thank you, sir. You, you'll be all right here, sir. You'll be all right. Uh, I shan't keep you a minute. There you are, my beauty. You'll be quite comfortable in there till I comes back. Good old Tommy. I thought he'd be too smart for him. You've got to be smart these days. Anson! No, it's good. Yes, it is. No, it's good. Go away, Aunt. She's easy through these. Come on, get your turn. You've had it for ages. Yeah. I thought you two were meant to be looking at birds. So we are. That is a nice one, isn't it, Mr. Bancroft? <laughs> Come on, pilot. And I'm the rear gunner. <laughs> yeah, Nelson hasn't got a rear gunner. Mine has. <laughs> yeah, I missed it. Here, yeah, you two. Watch those glasses. Better let me look after them. What did that fly, Mr. Bancroft? Hmm? Well, well, it looks rather like that when you're flying low down. I think you'd enjoy it. You was in the Battle of Britain, weren't you, Mr. Bancroft? Yeah. What was that like? Hmm. You know a big cricket match? Thousands of people in the grandstands and everyone buying the lunchtime papers to see the score. Well, rather like that. And a lot more players than us, though, didn't they? Yes. We were playing for the best side in the world. We were playing for England. We were playing on our home ground. So you see, they'd bitten off a bit more than they could chew. Time you two were getting back to school. Who's taking you this afternoon? Miss Pennyman, we got ornithology. What does that mean, Mr. Bancroft? <laughs> you mean ornithology? It means a study of birds. That's what you're doing now. 
on you two, you better get cracking. We're getting a stick. Oh, Curtis hasn't got a stick, he keeps his in. I'd rather have a stick. <laughs> so would I. Goodbye. Goodbye. Miss. We've read the Bancroft, miss. Study? What? Orthonology, miss. What you've written up there, miss. What does it mean? Watching birds. Mm, you seem to know all about it. Let's see if you can spell it. Come here. Here you are. Is that right? Not quite, Miss. She's got one letter wrong. Which one? Please, teacher, please, teacher. You're both wrong. There you are. It's all right, miss. We know what it means. All through the night. Anybody would think we were fifth columnists. It's absolutely outrageous. Preposterous. Check. No way out up here. I could have told you that. I'll give old Hooper a piece of my mind. You wait. Oh, for goodness sake, stop that infernal row, Cresta! I was only trying to cheer us up. We've been here an hour already. Go on, Shuttleworth. Move your bishop. Oh, I didn't see that. Here, someone. At what? last. Oh, thank you. Oh, my dear fellow, I am sorry. You look it. He thought you were aim stealers. I do apologize. Oh, that's all right. All's well that ends well. Now then, Hooper, let's go have a look at these confounded birds. We've wasted enough time here. Well, we'll waste no more. Come along. Come along. Come on. Oh, by the way, I'll trouble you for that half crown. Oh, I done it all for the best, sir. Marvellous. Wonderful. Almost human. Uh, oughtn't we to let two of the others have a chance Good now? gracious, no. We've only been here a couple of minutes. Oh. We've been here 18 minutes. Just like Wimbro. Yes, I'm sick of it. Let's fetch him out of it. Come on. Sheer greediness, I call it. I really do think we ought to give the others a chance now. Oh, well, let, let them come and fetch us. Wimbro, we really must go. Stop now. it, Kraska. I'll go and I'm jolly well ready. Well, you're ready now. You're not the only ones who want to see. Oh, it's you. No need to get rough about it. Well, you shouldn't try to hog the hive. Oh, cut the kettle and get him, son. Now who's being rough? Shh. What a little peach. Never heard such a fuss. We were only there about five minutes. More like 25. I thought we were overdoing it, you know. Stop for nonsense. Uh, by the way, Hooper, I presume you're keeping a record of this epic? Of course I am. What do you take me for? May the 28th, 715. Noticed on lips for a tinfold pair of birds suspected of being tawny pippets and so on. Right up to the time of your arrival. May the 28th? But today's the 28th. Don't be silly. Today's the 29th. My hat. It's my wedding anniversary and I've forgotten to wish Mrs. Crasker many happy returns. She will be upset. 
I must send a telegram. It's the first time for 23 years I've forgotten. Yes, that's it. I must send a telegram. I asked you to send this to the laundry. Look at it. You want a new one? That one's on its last legs. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Oh, darling. Well, my name's Elton. This is Mrs. Elton. Oh, how do you do? We were looking for a pitch. I wonder if you could help us. Yes, I should say the corner by Wellcroft. We had a caravan there last year, people from the north. Oh. I'll give Mr. McDougall a ring if you like. Would you? That's very nice of you. Not at all. You're very welcome. Are we the same firm? No, I'm afraid I'm a Methodist. <laughs> same firm, different department, eh? <laughs> very nice. I'll tell you what. I'll take you down there if you like. That's very civil of you. Not at all. Come on, Ezekiel. And this is how you spend your holiday, eh? Splendid. Yes, Johnny, like this for the past 18 years, never gone back empty-handed yet, have we, Elsie? I ought to tell you, we don't only do it for the sunshine and fresh air. Amos is a very keen bird watcher. Well, you've certainly come to the right place this time. We've got a couple of little visitors from Central Europe nesting here. And this campestris, the tawny pipit. Here? Well, just outside. But surely that's tremendously rare. It is indeed. They've only bred in England once before. You've come at exactly the right moment. <whistles> what a bit of luck. Providence, say, Moss. Uh, my dear, let me show you. See? You, you rest the telescope on the knee. See, it keeps it steady. And if you get a nice, comfortable position, you can stay like this for days. <laughs> I never know which are the most interesting, the birds or the watchers. It takes all sorts to make a world, you know. Ah, here you all are. I've brought along a kindred spirit. This is the Reverend Elton, who has the caravan up at Wellcroft. How do you do? Mr. Bancroft, Miss Broom, who made the big discovery. How do you do? Ah, oh, Mr. Crasker, there you are. Mr. Elton, this is Mr. Crasker one of our distinguished visitors from the Association of Ornithologists. How do you do? I uh, brought Mr. Elton along to have a peep at our little stranger. Oh, well, come along, have a ringside seat. <laughs> I might almost say a wingside seat. <laughs> <laughs> I see you two get along like a house on fire. Well, it's nice to be on our own for a few minutes. Yes. Still, I like little Kraska. I always feel I want to mother him. I'm the one you want to mother. I can do with all the mother love that's knocking around. You're spoilt enough as it is. You put on a stone since we left hospital. <laughs> that's Miss Pyman's cooking. You'll never get back in a cockpit with that tummy. <laughs> it's my uniform I'm worried about. I'll put you in heavy bombers. Greatest event in the whole history of Lipsbury Lee, Mr. Elton. What are you sitting on, you little beauty? I keep a lot to get my hands under there. What's that? What's what? Listen, can't you hear? What about a short burst day with the rap? See how they take it, eh? Okay, sir. Give us a nice appetite. Now, how's this? Through here, along this lane, through this wood. That should be a bit lively. And out again here. Give us a bit of practice for the exercise. Okay, dog, sir. Hello, all station. Advance. Tanks. Coming this way, too. Coming over here? You never can tell with tanks. Oh, we must stop them. We must stop them. What with? I don't know what with, but we must stop them. Well, there are only two ways they can come. You go that way, and I'll go this.
Good show, Wilson. Well, what is it? You see, we've got two very rare birds nesting just over here. Birds? <laughs> What's that to do with me? Well, they're right in the middle of the field, and all this, I mean. Who are you? My name's Hazel Broom. Well, that's all right, Miss Broom. We shan't disturb your birds. But it's a ground nesting bird. She's sitting on five eggs. It's one of the most wonderful things that's ever happened in England. What kind of bird? A tawny pipit. Never heard of it. You, Sergeant Dawkins? No, I should never heard of it. Mostly sparrows round our way. Look here, is this some kind of a leg pull? Oh, no, it's true. You can come and see for yourself if you like, only please, not in a tank. You must go back. Really, you must. Please. Beg pardon, sir. Corporal Philpotts is a bird fancier. He might be able to clear it up. Tell him I'd like a word with him at once. Yes, sir. Sergeant Brown, tell Corporal Philpotts the captain wants him. Hi, Corporal. The old man wants you. What, me? Yes, you. Go on, double up. Do you realize what you're asking? For the sake of five birds, But it's you? the most wonderful thing Yes, ever... I know. You've said that before. Anyway, we'll soon see. Ah, there you are, Corporal. I understand that you know something about birds. Well, I ought to, sir. I was secretary to the Royal Ornithological Trust in Sophie Street. Isn't that wonderful? Just one moment, please. Now, this young lady says they have a rare bird breeding in a field here called the tawny pipit. Anthus campestris? My hat, is this true? Yes. There's such a bird, Corporal? Oh, my hat, yes, sir. If this is true, it's absolutely terrific. Thank you, Corporal. Uh, beg pardon, sir. Now, just one more question. In your opinion, if we went across this field, should we jeopardize the successful hatching of this bird's eggs? Oh, yes, sir. This is one of the most... Don't keep saying that to me. Sorry, sir. But this is meat and drink to me. As an authority on bird life, you would definitely advise... Oh, yes, sir, definitely. This is one of the most... Sorry, sir. Very well, miss. I shall proceed by road. Oh, you darling! And you? Corporal! Back to your tank, I think. Yes, sir. I'm terribly sorry. I shouldn't have done that, should I? Oh, not at all, not at all. We're, we're frightfully glad you did. <laughs> what the devil are you laughing at, Wilson? Thank you, pardon, sir. Well, goodbye. And I hope... Your eggs hatch out successfully. Thank you. So that's the way you fix them, eh? No, they were fixed already. Come and sit down. I'm nearly through. Stitch in time saves nine, eh? That's it. Still, it hasn't lasted so badly. Good 400 years. Shan't mind if I last as long. It's a beautiful fit. Yes, I'm rather proud of it. This is part of an old table leg. Timber's a bit of a problem these days. I brought the anthem, Mr. Kingsley. Splendid. Excellent. I don't say it's poetry, but it's certainly verse. <laughs> Come and sit down, then, and let's hear it. It's quite short. First verse. To Lipsbury Lee there came a wonder. Two feathered visitors, I mean. Brownie above and creamy under. No spots upon their chests are seen. Chorus. It's a very great honour. We all agree that they came to nest in Lipsbury Lee. Second verse. These birds so rare, then let us nourish and guard their nest as twere our own, so that their young may thrive and flourish long after they away have flown. Chorus. It's a very great honour. We are all agreed that they came to lips relieved to breed. Absolutely first rate. Now, what about the tune? Oh, I'm sure you like that. 
It's positively triumphant. <laughs> Come along, then. Let's hear it. I was a little worried about breed. What do you think, Miss Dingsley? Ought I to tone that down a little? Oh, no, not at all. After all, that's what it is, whether we like it or not. I always think it's all right, as long as it's just eggs. It's all right anyway, Miss Penniman. I suppose the choir will be able to master this by Sunday. Oh, yes. It's quite simple. You listen. Two lips brilliant. It's a very great honor, we all agree, that they came to nest in Lipsbrilly. I was afraid we'd have some bother over those birds. I know. I hated Montague Martin the moment I saw him. <laughs> oh, there you are. Yes, we came along right away. I'm afraid I've got a bit of a bombshell for you. The committee is making a fuss about the pin pool being plowed. But I thought they were going to let you substitute. Mm, so did I. They've let everybody else substitute. They usually take the view that a farmer knows his own land best. Sean I've got to see the man. Right. Oh, remind me to get some oil in Charlington, will you? OK. The trouble is, there's a bloke called Montague Martin at the head of the committee who's got it in for me. Put a boiler over some shooting. You mean you may be forced to plow it? It means that if it isn't plowed within seven days, they'll send in their own machinery and plow it for me. Whether I like it or not. But this is fantastic. We must do something about it. Does the Colonel know? Yes. I rang him as soon as I got the letter. I'm seeing him in Challington this morning. Buck up, Nancy. Just come. But surely it's too late for ploughing. <laughs> That's the whole point. I could sow it with roots. I don't want to, and it wouldn't do much good there. But I could, if somebody wanted to be nasty. That's the whole point. You want to drive, Nancy? Yes, OK. All right, here you are. Anything you want in Charlington? No, thanks. Miss Pyman went in by bus this morning. Don't worry. Colonel will be a real sort of all right. Bye now. Bye bye. There you are, sir. I've been chasing you everywhere. What's the verdict? Flat refusal. Uh, who did you speak to? Montague Martin himself. He was downright rude. Said perhaps this would teach me to shoot other people's partridges. I knew that was at the back of it. But they can't let a thing like that stand in the way. D did you mention the pivots? No. I just told him I was putting the matter in your hands and that he'd be hearing further. Uh, what did he say to that, huh? He told me I could go to the devil and you could go and play in your own backyard. Mr. Lomas, uh, put this down to my account. I'll take it right to the Ministry, MacDougall, right to the top. Montague Martin's not the only pebble on the beach. Play in my own backyard. I'll show him. What does poor out your address to me, Mr. Bancroft? Oh, it means through hard work to the stars. Is that French? No, Latin. It's like Astro. That's right. Astro hat. Same word. Hello. What's that? Don't say it's more tanks. Oh, no. It's only a tractor. Do you think it was your captain friend come back for another fixing? He was very attractive. Oh. He's coming in here. It's a plow. What do you think he's doing? Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Nice day. Ah, that's been a nice day. There was some rain, though. 
Brown needs it bad. I says to my governor, you can't plow that pin full till you've had some rain. And he says, never mind about the rain. You go and plow it. Plow it? What on earth for? County committee. Special order. Just come through. There you are. Mad. That's what I reckon they are. Mad. But there must be some mistake. Mr. McDougall was given seven days grace. I'm only doing what I've been told. Uh, hold on a minute. There's something over there I, I really think you ought to see. Now, that won't take seconds. All right. But I haven't got all day. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, have you got the glasses? No, I... What did he mean? Just watch. Funny, I haven't heard. I guess I know most things around here. Well, go in and have a look. Now, you two stay here, and when you get a chance, tell Mr. Bancroft I've gone down to the farm. They're having me on. There's nothing but a come and a garden titler. Thousands on them around here. Oh, no, they're not. They're frightfully rare. I tell you what, I'll leave about a yard margin all round. How'll that do you? Oh, thanks very much. That's fine. They are mad. Well, that settles that. I've sent two of my men to collect it and lock it in my barn. When the committee want it, they can come and fetch it. Splendid. Good show. Are you catching the early train? Yes, land us in Whitehall soon after 10. There's only one thing. We haven't really got an appointment, have we? Maybe he won't see us. Oh, he'll see us all right. They've already written to him. Don't you worry, the minister was my fag at Marlborough. Jolly good fag he was, too. I don't like pulling strings, and I never have done, but this time I'm going to. Most people have to start from the bottom and work up. We'll start from the top and work down. It used to be called the Board of Agriculture. I don't know why they couldn't leave well alone, I'm sure. Will you come this way, please? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can I help you? Uh, uh, my name is Barton Barrington. We've called to see the minister. I have you an appointment? In a way, yes. In uh, what way, sir? Well, I wrote to him, and he should have had my letter by this morning. Well, I'm afraid the minister doesn't see anyone without an appointment, sir. May I ask what it's about? Yes, your people are threatening to plough up some very valuable bird's eggs, and we want to get it stopped. Bird's eggs? Oh. Excuse me a moment, will you? I wonder what happened to Uncle Arthur. He's usually so punctual. Oh, I expect he'll follow us up. He says they're very valuable. Tricky things, bird's eggs. You know the fuss there was about that Marsh Harrier's nest last year. Yes, I know, but what do you suggest? Wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Got a red tape. Anybody think we're asking for the moon? Look here. Take not to public relations. Sounds like the lunatic fringe of government. <laughs> I'll get them on the telephone. Right. She's sitting on five eggs, eh? Sounds almost like a cabinet matter. It's only bred in England once before. Uh, and, and your people are threatening to plow up the whole shooting match. Well, I think you'd better see our Mr. Philipson. I think it's more his line of country. I'll have a word with him. Yes, well, well I'm pretty busy, but I, I can spare him a couple of minutes if you send him down right away. But Colonel Barton Barrington has an appointment. It don't make no difference. I don't see how they can see him. Of course, they might see Mr. Donington, they might see Mr. Philipson. Well, I'm sure they can't see the minister. Yes? Yeah. No, not yet, sir. But why can't they see him? Of course they can't, that's all. But why ever not? Of course the minister's not here, see? Down at the house all night sitting. We don't know when he will be in. <laughs> you mustn't imagine, Colonel, that because we happen to be a government department, we're entirely lacking in the finer feelings. Why, beneath this, uh, this facade of cold efficiency, we're just as much human beings as you are. And our hearts beat just as strongly at the sight of Mother Nature in all her splendor. Why, I myself and a number of my colleagues here are very fond of wildlife. We should hate to be instrumental in destroying such a, a, a rarity as you describe. But 
you must realize that we can't make fish of one and fowl of another. So you realize we have to be absolutely impartial. Otherwise, we're going to be inundated with requests of this kind. So I, I fear I must insist that the decision of your county committee uh, must stand. But look here, the minister was my... Oh, well, what's the use? Come on. And I'm really very sorry. But you must realize these are not ordinary times. Good morning. Good morning. There you are. Fat lot of good you've been. You might have made all the difference. Oh, no good then. No, complete waste of time. The whole place is a farce. Get back in. Morning, Slater. Morning, sir. Tell Mr. Sturgis I've gone straight up, will you? Yes, How about these supports, sir? Oh, I'll attend to those later. Very well, sir. Sainted out if it isn't old Bax Barrington. <coughs> Get out! Oh, 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 yeah. What on earth brings you here? Oh, no, nothing at all, nothing. Anyway, it's all settled now. No, no, I know you, Bax. Something's wrong. Anyhow, come up to my room for a moment. May I really? Of course you oh, can, good gracious me. Funny thing, you know, I was only talking to the PM about you about a couple of days ago. We were talking about... Oh, just give us a few minutes, will you, Fergus? Oh, but, sir, the... Who are these people, Packer? Why did you let them in? I didn't let them in, sir. I didn't come on to half past. A weaver must have done it. Well, it's ridiculous. He's got about a dozen appointments today. It sounded like an old friend to me, sir. Well, that may be, but we seem to have no time for friendship. No. Friendship won't help us win the war. Stuff and nonsense, old man. Be a bad lookout for the world if we couldn't help our friends now and again. You, uh... You say this farmer's willing to substitute? Oh, yes. No trouble about that at all. Well, then... I think this is a case where we can temper justice with a little mercy. Hmm? Yes? May I remind you, sir, that we have an appointment. Oh, never mind that now, Sturgis. I want you a minute. What's the name of this fellow? Montague Martin. He's a major. Uh, Marbury 86. Just take that down, Sturgis. I want you to ring this man, uh, Marbury 86. Ask him to hold up the plying at Lipsbury Pinfold. It's one of those special cases. You know what to say. Very good, sir. How's that? That ought to meet the situation, eh? Jolly good show, sir. Now he can go and play in his backyard. What's that? Oh, oh, oh nothing. I'm ju just thinking aloud, sir. <laughs> ah, will you hand me up that Chinese flag, please, Colonel? <laughs> I knew you'd had a good day. Old Montague Martin was like a dog with two tails. Said he'd been on the phone to the minister. The minister this and the minister that. <laughs> well, that'll teach Montague Martin a lesson. I was going to ask him over to meet this Russian girl, but not now. What's the procedure, Colonel? Well, she can only stay half an hour, so it'll be short and sweet. I say, Kingsley, what about a Soviet flag? I mean, to say it's their party. I'm afraid we were in a bit of a fix about that till McDougal came to the rescue. Yes, we've borrowed the two red ensigns from the town hall. We're going to fold them in half and use them red side outwards. And I'm going to cut a hammer and sickle out of one of these yellow pennants. Oh, jolly good show. What about music? It's all arranged. A nice little choir. Miss Pennyman's got them well rehearsed. I've heard them practicing. I think it's going to sound pretty good. One, two, three. Ding, hooray, 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 hooray. I'm now going to have the very great pleasure of making a small presentation to Lieutenant Bokolova. I'm going to present her with my old telescopic rifle. I was going to lend it to the Home Guard, but now I think this young woman could make a better use of it than ever I could, and so I'm going to present it to her on behalf of us all, and I'm going to ask you all to give her a thundering good cheer. <laughs> I'm going to call upon this brave, and I'm sure you'll all agree with me, beautiful representative of our gallant Russian ally to say just a few words to you. I bring greetings from the Red Army to their heroic comrades in the British fields, factories, and workshops. We are proud 
to be allied to the free people of Britain. We mean to smash the fascist invaders. I myself have shot over a hundred Hitlerites. And I'm looking forward to shooting many more. Fine figure of a woman, eh, Kingsley? Oh, yes, yes, uh, quite so. When I go home, I am telling the Red Army about your beautiful country. I myself have been working on a farm ever since I was a little girl. Mostly, it is cornfields, as far as you can see. It is a rich land and full of growing. It's our home. But now the Germans have come and there is no corn. And of my father and mother, I know nothing since more than a year. So you see, we shall fight to the last. The Red Army is making a good use of all the things your ships are bringing. And to the heroic comrades in the British Army, Navy and Air Force, they send their fraternal greetings. Long live the free people of Britain and the Soviet Union! <laughs> that we haven't. Well, it's simply that she happens to be a Russian and Russia's been invaded and trampled on, and we haven't. It's what she said about our cornfields that got me. Our fields are still green, greener than ever. If the Germans had got here, I only hope I should have made a better sniper than I have a land girl. That goes for me, too. Should have seen the look she gave old B.B. when he handed her the rifle. Should have heard the kiss she gave him, an absolute smacker. Did she kiss you too? Oh, <laughs> worse luck. I was on the wrong side. She must have made a terrific impression on you. How old is she? Oh, quite young. How young? Thirty-ish. What does ish mean? Thirty-three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> About thirty-eight. So it's right to have your leg pulled. <laughs> Getting jealous. Just I was going to make you an offer. An offer? What sort of offer? A permanent offer. I'd have made it before, but you know, an airman's life isn't worth a paper it's written on. What made you change your mind? Oh, lovely weather. Mr. and Mrs. Pippet. Olga Bokolova. Olga Bokolova. I'd have changed it for you. Right on his cue. Bless his little heart. Poor old Joe. There you are. Your own mother wouldn't know you. What do you think of him? A masterpiece. Eggs all right? Oh, yes. Oh, very nice. Almost as good as the real thing. Except that they'll never hatch. Cheer up, sonny boy. He looks like you're going to a funeral. I can't do it. I can't do it, I tell you. They've been so decent to me. Here, wait a minute. Who stole the Dottrell's clutch in 1934? Who stole the Greenshank clutch in 1938? Who stole the Kite's clutch from Mr. Savage in 1939? Who robbed the Delphi Museum in 1940? How would you like the ABO to know they're the fifth columnist in their midst? Stop it. Stop it, I tell you. I'll do it. Now you're talking. Remember, no noise. We don't let Philip Bancroft throwing a spanner into the works. He's as sharp as a needle. Oh, 
Oh, sir. Mr. Bancroft. Mr. Bancroft. Sounds like our reverend friend. What on earth does he want at this time of night? Oh, hello, Mr. Elton. Anything the matter? No, no. I meant to tell you I was coming down this evening. I want to watch the birds in the early hours of the morning. Do you know, very little has been written about how birds begin their day and at what precise hour. Oh, really? Of course, I can't do anything ambitious, but there has to be a start. Well, carry on, then. It's all yours. Oh, they won't be stirring yet. It's barely three o'clock. I think I'll take a turn under the trees. Why don't you join me? Oh, no, thank you. We were just going into the hide. We don't like to go too far away. Well, in that case, perhaps you'll allow me to join you. It's not very nice walking about alone in the dark, is it? Well, then you'd better come along with us. There's just about room for um, three. You sit there, Mr. Elton. Thank you. I can just see the tip of her wing. It's too early to watch yet. They won't be stirring for some time. Did you ever see the nest of the brush turkey, Mr. Bancroft? It's composed of rotting leaves and vegetation, which the male bird scrapes together into a huge pile. Really? Do you hear that, Jimmy? Oh, yes. Do go on. I'm listening. The female lays her eggs in layers in the middle of the mound, and it's kept warm by the heat of the rotting vegetation. Uh, Mr. Bancroft, I, I don't believe you're listening. Jimmy! This is awfully interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> As I was saying... Anyway, if it's too cold, he bashes some more leaves on, and if it's too warm, he scrapes some leaves off. You see? Oh, I sort of brush and scrape a bird. arrive, sometimes the father bird has to help them out of this compost heap. Listen, but, what's that? And then, don't you see... Shh. That's funny. She's flown off. I expect it was me making too much noise. I wonder. That's all right, I'll go. sound, I'll cry on you. Get him, Taffy. All right, all right. No good struggling. Let me go. I'm a civilian. Yes, and we're the Christie minstrels. Come on, let's have a look at you. Civilian. You come and tell that to our captain. Come on, Taffy. 
Now mind, if you open your mouth, I'll do you. Yes. Message for you, sir. 295-314. Hello, what's all this? Reconnaissance patrol, number seven platoon, reporting in, sir. Taking a prisoner. Good, sir. Bring him over here. That's all. But, but I'm not a spy, sir. I'm a civilian. <laughs> well, we were all in Civvy Street once. Okay, search him. Shot at dawn for you, my friend. But I tell you, I'm a civilian, sir. You can't do this to me. This isn't Germany. That's a lot, sir. Don't look in that, sir. There's nothing in it. Really, there isn't. What the? Five sparrow's eggs. That's right, sir. Sparrow's eggs. Yes, sir. Let me see, sir. Why, they're the tawny pipit's eggs. He must have robbed the nest. You little devil. How long since you caught him? About 20 minutes, Corporal. We caught him creeping across a field. Have you gone mad, Corporal? But they're still warm, sir. They're still warm. What about it? Well, if we can only get them back in time, they'll still hatch, sir. Then we shall have five chicks, sir. Well, what can I do about it? Lend me your motorbike and let me take them back, sir. But, Corporal, these eggs are none of our business. Oh, we made them our business the other day, sir. We saved the eggs then. We can't let them down now. Yes, but the other day was... These eggs are yours and mine and, and his and his and his and Major Watson's and the Colonel's. They belong to England, sir. Oh, please, sir, they're getting cold. You can certainly spin a yarn, Phil Potts. OK, be back in an hour. Thank you, sir. Look up. Come on, you. You're showing me the work. Talk about war, Ames. All right. Yes. Well, hang on. Are you sure this is right? It's somewhere over here. I remember this gap. Come on. No. Which way? Across here, I think. Don't you know? I think this is right. No oh, good. I'm lost. I'll just about murder you if these eggs are addled. Can't you remember anything? No. I'm absolutely lost. Those trees over there, don't they mean anything to you? No. no. Here. Yes. Wait a minute. I know where we are. There's a hide. I see. Listen. What? Listen. I wish you'd shut up. Can't you hear? Come on, let's go out. Hello? Who's there? What's he doing here? That's the game. They're still warm. The eggs, they've been stolen. Get them back quickly while they're still stolen? warm. Stolen? By who? Never mind about that now. Get them back. The eggs are there. These are plaster ones. I knew I heard someone. <sighs> That's all we can do. Come on, let's give her a chance to get back. Whatever's the matter? Egg stealers, that's what's the matter. Egg stealers? Oh, I can't believe it. Where is he? Where is he? Where's who? It's no issue trying to bluff it out, you hypocrite. What on earth is he talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I'm not afraid of you anymore. I've owned up. I've told them I did it, and I'm going to tell them why. He's drunk. You hypocrite. You snake in the grass. You wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> But I know you as the Reverend Amos Elton. How is it you carry an identification card in the name of Pickering? Because my real name is Pickering. In that case, you've committed an offence under Article 20 of the Defence Regulations and I shall have to arrest you. Quite right, too. But he's a thief. Ah, well, we sort all that out when we get him inside. If I were ten years younger, sir, I'd knock you down. So oh, would I. All in good time, all in good time. 
And I'm afraid I must ask you to come along too. I don't mind. I'm a free man at last, and I'm out of their clutches. I don't care what happens to me now. As long as those eggs aren't addled, that's all I care. Tearing out the eggshells. Beautiful, beautiful. I hear you're leaving us, my boy. Yes, I'm rejoining my squadron. Miss Broom's going back to nursing. But we were wondering if in a few weeks' time we could ask Mr. Kingsley... If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. This is the first time of asking. And now... Uh, with special reference to the events of the last three weeks, hymn number 573, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Mm -hmm. 